Danny. How are you doing today, man? I'm very well, Lewis. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Excellent. And as is, as is the tradition of this podcast, I'm going to have to ask you, how's Scotland? How are things in Glasgow? It's getting worse, Lewis. It's getting worse. I see. Yeah. There's, there's rioting on the streets. Uh, three people were killed over uh, a loaf of Hovis bread. And it's not even good bread, man. I know. That's the that's the that's the point. That's the only bread that that's here that's considered good anymore. Is, is Hovis? Oh, Dan, bad news. I've just had an email. Yeah, we just lost the ten million pound Hovis sponsorship. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, uh, good news though. I've just had an email from Warburton's. Oh, all right. Uh, please remember to buy Warburton's crumpets, everyone. <laughs> or don't. I mean, like we aren't getting paid. That was a hilarious skit. Yeah. Yeah, I we we should say in the interest of fairness again that uh, there are many other types of bread. Yeah, many types sold, of bread and crumpets and sold baked throughout goods. the United Kingdom and beyond. Um, mm. Yeah, well, that I was usually make my own bread. You make your own bread. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't, I don't eat enough bread to be like, oh yeah, I need a big loaf of like. Tesco own brand white bread or whatever. I, I don't <laughs> eat enough bread to just get a loaf of bread. So it's like, oh, I'm having soup. I guess so I should have some bread with this. So I make some bread. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. You know, I don't eat enough bread to, to you know to get a loaf. So I've just got all the equipment to fucking make bread. You know, that's... all the what? What do you think is involved in bread making? I don't. Fa- I don't know. I've never made bread. What, like what? like flour and water and salt and yeast. Then you need like a bowl, maybe a mixing spoon if you can't be bothered to use your hands. Where do you get yeast? Tesco. Or other supermarkets are available. <laughs> <laughs> Tesco sells yeast. Yeah. Can you give someone a yeast infection with yeast? I think it's a different type of yeast, man. I don't... Well, why would they just make another word for it? I don't, I don't know. Because I think it's still a type of yeast, because yeast is like a fungus, like a mushroom. And and the yeast that you use for bread is not a fungus. No, that is a fungus, it's just a different fungus. But it's called yeast. Yes. So that's like... That's like having two nuclear buttons, that wa- one of them works and one doesn't, but n- neither of us know which. Surely it's a bit more like saying, well... Lions and cat, lions and house cats are both cats, but like, only one of them's gonna rip your face off. Yeah, but lions have got different na- like a different name for 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 themselves. Both of them are just called yeast. If there's two <laughs> unmarked tins of yeast, one contains the poisonous fungus and one contains the stuff to make bread, then that's pretty dangerous, isn't it? I feel like they do have different names. It's just a colloquialism to call them both yeast. Right. Okay. Like, because you have different yeast, like, anyway, like, brewer's yeast and baker's yeast and all that stuff. Oh my god, I'm so boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, there are three different types of yeast, and we should all know the different types of yeast. Oh my god. I only, I only know, um, I only know how to make vodka. With and potatoes? Yeah, or turnips, or... Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's the one, for two weeks. You know, tequila is made with cactus sap. How crazy is that? <coughs> That's is a nice cough I'm going to edit out. You don't have it. I mean, let's just keep it real. Let's just... Let's lick. keep the coughs in. Keep yep. the coughs and the sniffles and... Yep, those some are the best bits. Those yeah, yeah, perfect. Bits. Yep. Funnier than all the jokes. So, this podcast is a special one, isn't it, Lewis? It is. It's our 10th anniversary, Danny. Oh. We've been doing this for a bit, and now this is our 10th podcast. How exciting is that? We've managed to squeeze out... 10 crummy, I mean, uh, 10 excellent podcasts. <laughs> perfect, Danny, perfect. Yep. They've been sh- they've been shoved out like a wearied, almost done ice and paper. Just sort of getting the last ditch out before you chuck it in the bin and then get another one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure how to take that analogy. Like, are we the so we're the last dregs of icing, or are we the piping bag, or are we the baker? Um, the podcast is the icing, right? <laughs> we're the we're the bakers, uh, and the the bag is or the piper, I should say, is uh, 
uh, the, uh, my my computer and your computer. Right. Yeah. If we're oh. the baker, then that's a pretty. That, I like that because it's like, yeah, we're going to pick up a new bag and do ten more podcasts. Well, what 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 bag are we picking up? Are we picking up yeast? Or are we picking up <laughs> yeast? You know. <laughs> What, what I'm going to pick one? up the yeast. I'm going to give him a, a, a slight looking over and think, oh yeah, that looks a bit more fatal than the other one. <laughs> I'll chuck that in the bread. So, on on my notes, Lewis, I've got a, a, a heading that says 10 minute bullshit. Yes, yes. A, and underneath that is the word banana. Now, okay. I, don't, I don't know why I wrote that, because I wrote that uh, last week. Okay. <clears throat> so, by... By a royal, a, a, a royal decree, we have to talk about bananas. Okay, that sounds interesting. You know, in Thailand, they use banana trees as punching bags because that because the trunks of the trees are like a bit soft. And we're off to a racing start, folks. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Google that bad boy. It's true, as far as I know. How? Wh- wh- what do you mean they use them as punching bags? Like, how big are the bananas? What? No, the trees they use as punching bags, not the bananas. Oh right. <laughs> Like just a bundle of bananas, some, <laughs> some. I really hate bananas. Fucking bananas. <laughs> so, they use banana trees as punching bags. As far as I'm aware, yeah, this is something that was told to me many, many years ago. Let me have a look. Uh, banana tree punching bags. Little girl punches down tree using boxing skills. Good oh, grief! Okay. Yeah, she does appear to be punching down the tree using boxing skills. And is it and is it a banana tree? No, it looks like a pine. A, a pine. Yes. She punched down a pine tree with her <laughs> with her with her boxing skills. What what kind of boxing skills does she have? Um. Well, it does look like a little pine tree. It looks oh, like more well, of a sapling than that. a tree. That's, that's cheating. Fuck off. I mean, why did that make the news? Oh, I I, I, I killed a twig. Fuck off. It made um uh, some guy's YouTube channel. It's a minute and two seconds. This video. Aye, that's too much time devoted to that shit. I thought it was a proper big pine. Do you know what I mean that would have been impressive? But no, you killed an innocent baby tree to show off your boxing skills. Fucking Jesus. Ah, okay, here we go. It looks like um for Thai boxing Muay Thai. Um, they kick down banana trees to like strengthen and condition their shins for like kicks in Thai boxing matches. Right. See, see, for, see for a second there. I thought that 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 you'd adopted a, a West Country accent and you were just saying my Thai. <laughs> Muay Thai. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that Stephen Merchant episode of Travel Man? It was on just the other day. They went to Dubrovnik and looked at um, all the Game of Thrones stuff. And Stephen Merchant kept slipping into this um, this very pronounced West Country accent and like looking at the Iron Throne, and be like, "Oh my God, do you want to sit in that?" And all this. <laughs> do you want to sit in that, my love? I think neither of us can do a West Country accent, really. I don't think I've ever met anybody from the West Country. I, I've never met anyone from the West Country, so I shouldn't really be. But then so again, just... most most people who do a Scottish accent, I've never met anyone from Scotland. Well, I've met go... you, and I still can't really do a Scottish accent. <laughs> Go on, do do your best Scottish accent, Lewis. Careful not to be xenophobic now. <laughs> it's difficult not to be xenophobic when I just hate you so much. See, it's not bad. I mean, it's it, it, it needs a bit of work. It needs a bit of polishing. Yeah, it's years of mocking you. It was never designed for mass perf- mass performance. Well, what happens when you get an addition where you're a Scottish guy? What are you then I do? then I get the cloth out and I polish that accent. Then I get the cloth out. That's what I'd, that's what I'd polish them it with. A bit of cloth. A bit of cloth. Yeah. Cloth. That's what would you polish something with? I don't polish I don't, anything, Lewis. I, I don't, don't know why this is the hill I'm choosing to die on. But for some reason, I'm furious about polishing things. I don't have anything to polish. <laughs> right? Not even your glasses. <laughs> no. <laughs> my car. My glasses. I like those to be as obscured as possible. Yeah, my glasses are full of gunk and, and, and scratches and uh, that is disgusting yep yeah, and there's a little there's a little uh, sticker of a pine tree in the corner right. of it and once this little girl came up to me and started trying to punch them and like like she was trying to like 
She had like boxing gloves on and she kept trying to punch the small little pine tree in the corner of my eye for some reason. And Are I sure said, you were, she wasn't just trying to punch you in the face? No. And I said, there's a big pine over there. Like, go punch that. And she went, no, I, I, want, I want to make the news without actually doing anything impressive. So I'm going to punch your glasses. Because uh, they're... Sounds small. like a clever girl. Yeah. She made the news and now she's Woman of the Year. I'd like to point out she didn't. This this clip I found was not on the news. I googled a, a, an almost random string of words, and it was like one of the YouTube videos that came up automatically. Yeah, but what what is news now, Lewis? Um, it's, 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 most people don't even watch the news anymore. Most people just go onto the 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 interweb and the the the, the YouTube. <laughs> the YouTube. <laughs> they go onto that face app. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's where they get all their that's where they get all their prime time stuff, you know. Good stuff. I mean, what, I don't really on, watch the news. What, whatever's on trending ends up being the news on Twitter. Ah, should we look what's on trending now? Yeah, go on then. Okay, I've got my phone here. Treat Avo- myself to some Twitter. Avoid the political stuff, Lewis. <laughs> no. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're right. Um, trending. Uh, Mourinho, Jose, Mar- Jose Mourinho has been announced as the head coach of somewhere or other. If What's this? A, if you get a different trending to me, I can't find that. There's a hashtag which protect your bubble and make I'm a trending for some reason to make people insure their gadgets. There is hashtag Wednesday Wisdom, which Hack of the Dog is talking <coughs> about. You know, genuinely, one of the things I am proudest of in my career is meeting Hack of the Dog. That is a that was a great day. It was a great day. It really was. He he's such a lovely guy, or or animal, I should say. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's an actual piece of news. Uh, hashtag fact check UK. It's um. I mean, I know you said I can't really talk about politics. Oh Jesus! What are you? they um. Stop. Fact check UK is a stop. It's a Twitter account or something. <laughs> fact checking. Oh yeah, didn't. Oh yeah, didn't they change the name of a of a Twitter account? To fact check UK, I think so. And then people were like, "Wait, whoa, 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 what are you doing?" I think that was it. Mm, good stuff. Yeah, that was a that was a lovely jaunt on Twitter there. This is officially the world's largest drawing by an individual. All right, what's that then? What have they drawn? It's a little girl uh, who has no. It's not a little girl. It's just because the camera's pointed downward, it looks like a little girl. Um, it's a woman who's painted a floor with flowers. <laughs> right. And uh, Northeast illustrator Johanna Basford celebrates world record. So, people, people are annoyed that the fact that she hasn't coloured it in. Because it's just sort of, look, a white background with flowers on it and people are like why didn't you colour it in I see Um, that seems like the sort of thing people shouldn't really care about yeah keyboard warriors as as I call them I see I I don't think that's what you call them I think that's the word for 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 that no no, I coined that phrase Lewis oh did you oh excellent good to know anyone that says otherwise is spreading fake news Right, well, should we talk about what we're talking about today? Because that's how that works now. What are we talking about today, Danny? Um, uh, I've, got it, I've got it written down here. Um, <laughs> I've got it written down here. Uh, Rick and Morty, seasons one to three. Ah fascinating stuff. Yeah, we're talking about Rick and Morty today. It's one of my favourite TV shows. I know you absolutely love it as well. I certainly do. Um, we also have a, a brief snippet of, of delightful media from yep. a good friend of ours, Zachary Sutcliffe. What a guy, eh? Yep. We, we, had, t- we, we had Justin Roiland <laughs> booked uh, the creator of, of uh, well, co-creator of Rick and Morty and does the voice of Rick and Morty, but he cancelled, so we're Yeah, and then we with- got Dan Harmon. And then Dan Harmon cancelled. Yep. So another, now we have Zachary a, Sutcliffe. And there was another eighteen people down, like, 
before we got to Zach, like he was yeah, the last. Yeah. He was the last on the list that we could think of. So we mm. we apologise for that. Um, and he couldn't even come on either. Uh, so he recorded a wee clip or a wee voice note because he's so lazy that he couldn't be bothered coming on. So harsh. That's harsh. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Hi, this is Lewis here. Just to let you know, Zach did decide to start talking about Season 4. Now, he didn't spoil anything, and I'm very aware of this because I haven't seen Season 4, and I still don't know what's going on. If you really don't want to hear it, please skip to 19 minutes 41 seconds. That's where Danny and I pick up. If not, please listen to Zach. I promise it's worth it. Okay, thanks. Yo, boys, obviously want to start this off by apologising for not being able to make it onto the podcast this episode. Due to a little bit of technical fuckeries and, you know, Sutcliffe incompetence. But, nevertheless, I'm here to talk about Rick and Morty in the form of voice note, yeah? So here we go. Yo, I love this show. I fucking love this show. Everyone I know loves this show, yeah? And I put it down, anyway, to the complexities, right? Because there's things like the me seeks, innit? There's things like the me seeks and um, fucking Pickle Rick, you know what I mean? The stuff that's just nuts wacky bullshit and it's jokes but then there's the deeper shit like pff, uh, oh when 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 beth shoots mr P- mr poopy ball and just fucking dashes into the kitchen and starts drinking wine like a psycho um when rick breaks up with unity and tries to kill himself but literally he only is not dead because he fell asleep like the concepts in the show are so nuts while still keeping just wacky uh, bullshit going on at the same time. It's so sick. It's such a good premise, you know what I mean? Just good fucking baseline for it. It's sick, man. And I think that's why I've had all three seasons on repeat for, like, years. You know what I'm saying? And it's weird now watching season four, watching Rick and Morty, and not knowing what's going to happen, and not already knowing all the quotes. But... After Rick dying repeat, I'm already walking around my house going, oh, dying with Jessica. So it's like, it's already levels, man. But out of season four, I would have to say that the old man in the seat is better than the season premiere. And that's just because the character development, yo, that you get out of Rick. Not just Rick, but Marty as well, because Marty is slowly becoming Rick in that episode. Jerry is Marty's Marty in that episode. But what I'm trying to say, yeah, Rick... It shows you that he is putting people in these, like, fucking heaven bags where they get to live out the wildest fantasies, yeah? Literally putting them in heaven. Because he doesn't want to kill them, because he does like them, but he can't let them get close to him. Like, that is the maddest concept for a character. It's so nuts. And then by the end of it, after that guy dies through, like, no fault of Rick's because he wants to open up, he goes and, like, sits in that seat and sets the trap that he knew was there... And you see all the Rick holograms laughing. And, oh, yo, it's just sad. It's so sad. And Taika Waititi is in that fucking episode as well, which is just gangster. So that is my favourite episode of Rick and Morty of all time right now. All of Indicators does bang. But that leads me into what I want to ask you lot. I want to know what is your favourite moment of Rick and Morty. Not your favourite episode, not your favourite character, but your favourite specific moment because they're so varied you know what i'm saying and my second question is where do you want this series to end up where what do you want the series finale to be because we've seen rick have fucking fights with the president (laughs) which was fucking mental we've seen rick go to fucking space prison i mean what were the first one like a party or some shit so fuck that one but you know what i mean it can get nuts I want to know what you want to happen, what you think might happen, what could happen in between. Do you reckon we'll get more out of that fucking evil Marty? Or whatever the fuck do you think we're going to get, you know, some of these theories that you see online explained. I just want to wanna hear about Rick and Marty, man. I want to hear where you think it'll be going, because it could go anywhere. And that's me, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> and it's us again. It's not Zach anymore. It's just me and Danny. Hi. Hello. Lewis, now, Lewis, if I've Lewis, done that I'm, right, I, I'm sorry. I, I just I was so confused with the power dynamic there. Another person speaking on the podcast. 
I know, absolutely horrifying. I vomited twice. Never doing that again until episode 20. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if I, did that, if I did that right and didn't enormously mess it up, which, you know, I might have done, yeah. I should have skipped you ahead to Zach's questions. Let's do the questions first, eh? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, the, f- the questions the fir- were... Uh, your favourite moment what's your favourite moment from all of Rick and Morty's <coughs> history and the other one was where do you want the finale to go where do you want this this season 4 to go where do you want the entire thing to to go to end up yeah so Danny I ask you my friend what is your favourite moment of Rick and Morty what's my favourite what's my favourite moment yeah okay uh, <laughs> my favourite moment from a Rick and Morty is uh, season three. Mm. I can't remember. I can't remember the uh, the episode, um, but it's the one. It's it's uh, the Rick Lantis mix up where we spend yes, the whole yeah. time at the Citadel when 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 it's revealed that Evil Morty has returned and all the and all the Ricks and Mortys are sort of floating outside of the. The Citadel with that uh, theme tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for the damaged coda, I believe the song is called. Sure. Um, that's that's definitely got to be one of my favourite moments. Mm, that is a good, good moment. It's got to be said. So what what is yours, Lewis? You know, I'm not sure. I've thought about this a lot. But there are so many brilliant moments in Rick and Morty. I think my favourite theme of the show has always been this underlying current of absurdism, of of nothing really matters, nothing's important. Yeah. It, it, it's all ridiculous. Yeah. I think for that reason, I'd have to say my favourite moment is um, when Summer says um, something like, um, "I'm going to move to the southwest and do something with turquoise or whatever it is." She says, <laughs> and Morty goes up to her room and says, "Look, I'm nothing really matters. That's my body buried in the backyard. Yeah. Nothing really matters. We all die. No one was born for a reason. Come and watch TV." Because for me, that really encapsulates the feeling of the show. I think of, so. Of like. Rick saying, yeah, everything doesn't really matter. Like, don't think about it. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but just don't think about it. Yeah. Keep going, keep moving past it. Focus on science and all that crazy stuff he goes on about. Yeah, that's a, that is a very good moment. It's very, very existential. Hmm. And that's um, what I incorporate into my daily life. When I'm yeah. in Tesco, other supermarkets are available, and I'm looking at the yeast, and I'm thinking, well, you know, <laughs> nothing really matters. Oh, and then wow. I pick up whichever whichever yeast tickles my fancy at that moment. Fucking hell, we managed to segue the yeast back into that one. <laughs> Pretty impressive. There's always going to be yeast in these podcasts from now on. It'll be a, an ongoing theme. <laughs> what, what can what can you expect from shouting into the void where you can expect yeast? For one, that's the one thing we offer. More yeast than you bargained for. <laughs> that's, that's a great analogy for every episode that we do. It's either going to be the poisonous fungus that can kill you or the stuff he can make bread with that uh, is full of carbs. Um, I think you don't really understand bread well enough to make that analogy, but yeah, you're right. I tried, Lewis, okay? <laughs> Give me some credit for that. <laughs> so so here's the other question. Uh, where do you want the series to end up? In all of Rick and Morty, they were commissioned for like another 70 episodes a little while ago. Where do you want it to end up? What do you want to happen? Um, I want I want some resolution to Evil Morty. Mm-hmm. Um, but knowing how how sort of subversive uh, Harmon and Royland are, I wouldn't be surprised if they just sort of went, "Nah, fuck that, we're not doing that again." Yeah, and just sort of left it hanging. That would, I mean, I I hope that they don't do that. Um, but you know, it would fit into the sort of mantra that nothing matters. It's like, you know, that that might not even be the Citadel. That, that Rick went to. Yeah, yeah. It could be, because it's an infinite number of universes, so it could be a, just a completely different Citadel that we just sort of mm. showed up to. Because, of course, there's no guarantee that the Rick and Morty... Th- there's no guarantee that we follow a Rick and Morty through the show. Yeah, it could be millions of other... Yeah, it could be... Exactly, a, yeah. Exactly. Different um, Rick and Morty every episode. I think I would want the finale. I think I would want Rick to sort of uh, die peacefully. And sort yeah, of, yeah. And sort of get some some resolution. Maybe like he he starts sort of opening up, and and maybe he sort of 
he he dies in in a in a retirement home maybe mm. just mm. just just very peacefully sort of or or he he continues on living after his family's died and he just sort of wanders alone again that's e- either or those sure are sure so. i think um in the finale i would like some kind of not necessarily a rick absolution but i think it's always been quite clear that rick is like he does these ridiculous things and he's killed so many people and all this but as the show's gone on he has developed more of a love for his family and more of a he like he clearly loves morty and he clearly wants morty to succeed and he feels the same way about beth and i think he genuinely does hate jerry a bit but i think i'd like to see rick feel more comfortable with that side of himself with that side of him that does love his family and does want his family to succeed yeah i agree um, i think as well i'd like to see some kind of um an upside for morty in all this like rick like say it is such that rick dies in a care home peacefully or or rick starts dedicating his genius to something like charitable or whatever it might be if rick has like a resolution to his character arc i'd like a similar thing for morty where morty rises above this very anxious boy who follows rick around oh geez rick i don't know what i'm and all this he rises above that and starts building his own things for himself yeah i mean the way that he's going in the show it seems to me that he's becoming very independent yeah that's true and 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 i think that it's leading to a conflict between the two of them because morty is not the same morty that we met at the start of the show Mm, certainly you know the the final episode of of the last season uh season three when he, he he basically has a, a a spat with the president of the United States. Yeah, yeah. He's like, "Oh, I got pubes, Commander in Queef." Like you know yeah. stuff like that. He's doing. Yeah, and yeah. Rick's Rick's laughing and smiling. Going, ah, ha, 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 you know, um, but he's certainly becoming more independent of himself. And I'm wondering that how long is it going to be before they butt heads? Mm mm. Or perhaps they never will. That that's the other side of the coin is yeah, maybe. he might he might generate this independence and this sort of self awareness and then eventually just sort of think, Yep, well, I still want to work with Rick. I still like Rick, I still want to talk to Rick. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose I I think it would make for better drama if it if it was the former. But who knows? Who knows? Mm, you're completely right. Um so thank you very much to Zach for lending us his, his insight and giving us some lovely questions indeed and happy 10th episode everybody yes definitely right um, do you have an opening statement Danny I do I do hit me with it um, a witty dark existential comedy that refuses to take itself too seriously I can't agree more. Witty and dark is good. I think the darkness is it's it's like I don't know what the word is for. It's like post humor, if that makes sense. Like yeah. postmodern humor. Like how um like say Monty Python and the Holy Grail. You can see a lot of similarities between a lot of Monty Python stuff and a lot of Rick and Morty stuff. Definitely. And how it's it's this postmodern humor that's just funny because it wants to be funny it's ridiculous because it wants to be ridiculous rather yeah. than having to make a joke at somebody's expense like how all of the creatures are named like floopy noops and bibby dib and th- yeah. random collections of phonics yeah uh, it simultaneously is incredibly intelligent but you know the the, the interdimensional telly is literally yes. them just improvising and talking <laughs> shit yeah. it's you two know. brothers and they have a strong bond <laughs> yeah <laughs> Two brothers in a van and then a meteor hits. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it reminds it reminds me of this podcast. We just talk shite constantly. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, That's it's, true. It's the same level of consistency. Mm. Um, my opening statement is an endlessly chaotic show which embraces the absurdism of the universe and is all too happy to run with it. Wow. The thing yeah. I admire a lot about um, Rick and Morty is it takes this sort of mathematical model of randomness and just sort of goes with it. Yeah. It says, well, yeah, mathematically, there's any kind of chance that 
there are an infinite number of this same one person that exists in the universe. And yeah, some of them are going to band together and make this citadel and, and, and all this. It it runs with this idea of randomness lending towards chaos. Yeah. I think, I, yeah, I, I completely agree. And it, it's, it's clear how vast this sort of world is not I, d- I don't mean like worlds and planet I mean like the world of the show because like they say oh it's the it's the finest citadel in the central finite curve yeah which, yeah which is like it, it you can't help but feel Jesus the story that we're being shown ultimately is meaningless yeah because yeah. there's a billion other citadels where the same thing is happening with only a tiny difference mm. and there's a billion others where it's happening but completely different. Mm, mm, you're right. It's it's it makes it makes you feel sort of small, but not in a way that that you feel horrible about yourself. Mm. It just sort of like we're we're tiny creatures in this vast space. So let's just enjoy ourselves and it, let's it's, not um, take things too seriously. Yeah, it's cosmic horror without cosmic horror. Yes. That idea of, like, um, that Lovecraftian idea of there are great, ununderstandable forces out there in the universe, yeah. and I have no ability to see them, no ability to understand them, no ability to control them, and I am at their whim. That's, yeah. like, the sort of the cosmic horror, we're the only people in the universe, and you could travel for a billion years in any direction and not find anyone. Yeah. But also combined with the absurdism of nothing matters. Yeah. We're just here to have fun, just here to have a good time. Yeah, exactly. It's very, it's true. I love, I love, I love uh, Lovecraft. Like his, uh, his stories are absolutely fantastic, and I think that they, they, they reference that even in the opening titles when they're getting chased by Cthulhu. Yeah, it's yeah. It's like it is, it is cosmic horror mixed with alcohol, essentially. Mm. And in that episode where, um, oh, I forget what the the main plot of the episode was, but. It was Jerry and Beth go into the basement of the house and find that monster chained up to the wall. Yeah. And in in one of the vats off to the side in this lab, there's um a little Lovecraftian monster that looks a little bit like Cthulhu. <laughs> so just just a bit of a nod to that cosmic yeah. horror. And it'll it'll probably be the baby that they have at the it, in the in the title screen <laughs> that Summer has. It'll be the same baby that that, that Rick has just commandeered. Um, I I need this. I request this. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, that's it for opening statements. Indeed, I think. it is. Uh, um, do you have any CRQs? Room, yep. Creepy room questions. Uh, um. My first question is: Is Evil Morty Rick's original Morty? I have not considered this. What what is your evidence to, to suggest this hypothesis? Well, it's it's. Um, I remember watching the the one where they go to the Citadel for the first time. Yeah. And Rick gets captured by Evil Rick, and like, it shows a sort of image of like things Rick's done in his past. Sure. And like Morty is a baby in it. Yeah. But like. We know that Rick has, accor- according to Rick anyway, Rick has never been there to see a baby Morty because he's been gone and then he just sort of shows up again. Mm-hmm. So who was who was the baby that he was clearly holding? That's very true. Within the canon of the show, that would make sense if Evil, Evil Morty was Rick's original Morty or, or any of these things. But then equally it could be any number of other things. Yeah, well, that's that's that that's the whole. That's why they have they've got such a good deal because it's impossible to write yourself into a corner. In yeah. The show. Yeah. You, know, you you can you can use anything to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And um, I think in in the sense of the drama, it would make sense if it would be nice if that Morty baby was evil Morty. But I think I always presumed that evil Morty was like um. A Morty that had been... Like a Rick that had been born into a Morty's body, if that makes sense. Right. 
I didn't know if there was... I At first I sort of presumed there'd been some kind of brain-switching type thing, but then after the Citadel episode where Evil Morty kills all his political enemies and that, I presumed, okay, no, yeah, it's a Morty. Yeah, because Rick, Rick, wouldn't, Rick wouldn't care about, you know, sort of sustaining power in, in the Citadel. He would He could just destroy it. He wouldn't be so elaborate to mm. sort of win an election and then kill all of his enemies only to take control. That's not sort of his style. Yeah, he's very chaotic and he'll just sort of go in, destroy whatever he needs to and then leave. He doesn't mm. he doesn't sust- the only thing that he st- he wants to sustain whether he admits it or not is his family. You know. Yeah, that's I, true. And I think it's I think it would cheapen Morty's character if it was just a Rick in Morty's body. I think it's very interesting that this uh, child who's been so emotionally scarred and so broken and so hurt so many times that he's become a monster because of Rick. Yeah, yeah. And And I think it's interesting to consider the the possibility that if that is a, a Morty through and through... He's grown up on Earth. He he grew up either with a Rick, or if we take that footage into consideration, he he grew up with a Rick as a baby, and then Rick left him. So he didn't get the exposure to like the cosmos, like our Morty is getting. He yeah. he got uh, an exposure to like the political machination machinations of whatever his Earth is. Yeah. So that must be in a way that could just be the way he thinks is normal to try and defeat Rick or hunt Rick down. Is to take control of the council, take control of the citadel, and then hunt down Rick. Yeah, definitely. But it might not even be our Rick. And what what is our Rick? You know, surely there's another dimension called Earth C one thirty seven, with a you know a red cup somewhere instead of a blue cup. Well, wouldn't that be C one thirty eight or or C a million well, and five or whatever? Well, I, I I don't know. Do you think that the that the Citadel of Rex have counted every single universe. That's an interesting question because I would have, have to. The power, do they? Can they do that? I mean, if 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 they're infinite, how can you possibly? Or is it maybe a sort of selection of universes that that's that's in their data banks because it's like the central f- finite curve, and they just sort of say, right, okay, well, we're focused on this, so we'll just sort of keep these ones in our data and everything else is irrelevant mm. um, that would make sense but there is also this concept in mathematics and s- strap in for a boring one because I might put myself to sleep during this one but um, <laughs> <laughs> of, of like a countable infinity of because um, there's like an infinite number of infinities if that makes sense because there yes. are infinite numbers between zero and a million and there are infinite numbers between zero and a hundred yeah. But is that the same number of infinite numbers? Or is it an infinite number of infinite numbers? Does that make sense? Yes, that does make sense. So what we have to presume is that the Ricks know, okay, well, there are between zero and a huge infinite number of inf- of parallel dimensions. Yeah. So we're just going to assign them all a random string of characters, C137, B5, D103, whatever it might be, yeah. And when they come from there, we'll try and figure. When if people come from there, we'll try and figure out what they are. Yeah. That's that's the way I've always taken it, anyway. I I think that that's probably pretty accurate. Um. What is uh? What's your question? My first question was actually, what's Evil Morty's end game? Oh. Because if he is if he is related to Rick, if he's um are Rick's original Morty. Or even if he's a parallel Morty or anything, is his end game to cause political upheaval in the Citadel? Because that seems like a very sh- small-minded goal, really. I mean, he kills, he kills all of the Ricks in the in the secret sort of cabal of business Ricks. Yeah, yeah. But he and he changes the flag to like Morty. Mm. But he 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 doesn't he doesn't kill all the Ricks. Like, the, the the cop who was arrested, he's let sort of let go, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And let some and let a lot of Rex are sort of kept on as guards, and let Citadel 
uh, henchman. So maybe maybe he's not as malicious as as we think he is. That's very true. Maybe the lesser. He is, bit... He's clearly yeah. He's clearly he's clearly very um, devious in the way that he works. Mm, you know, because mm. he he has no problem killing his his rivals. But maybe it's a sort of greater good type thing. Greater thing. good. <laughs> greater good. Cider, <laughs> cider. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> maybe he is just. Maybe he just wants sort of a a, a decent sort of balanced, uh, balanced uh, citadel. Mm, he's mm. willing to do anything to get that. Perhaps, or maybe that episode was more of a sort of a parable or a fable towards the idea of, yeah, it's the changing of the guard, but it's all the same really. The wheel yeah. turns and keeps on turning, <laughs> and and this new Morty is just as cruel to whoever it is, this new subset of people he's cruel to, whereas before Mortys were an underclass, now he's designated some new underclass. Yeah. I mean, I I, I hope that he has some uh, disastrous endgame in mind for Rick. Yes. I hope that that that's what, what they're leading up to. I hope that they don't just sort of drop it and just go, well, you know, we don't care. You know, I hope that the 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 mantra "nothing matters" maybe is what teaches Rick that this this child that he abandoned is coming back to bite him in the arse. Maybe that's a sort of wake up call, as in, well, maybe some things matter. Maybe mm, that would be a good character arc. Yeah, yeah. like uh, it goes from nothing matters to well, actually, a couple things do. For example, abandoning a child <laughs> that yeah. that kind of is important. Because I think um, the whole point of, of Rick's Nothing Really Matters is his... Um, there are infinite realities where infinite things are happening. So therefore, if something worse is happening than what's happening here, then what's happening here doesn't matter. In the same way as if you live forever and you're immortal or whatever, things lose consequences after a while. If you yeah. kill somebody and go to prison for 25, 30 years or whatever it might be, you that's nothing. It's the blink of an eye for if you're immortal. Yeah, definitely. And if you're a Rick who can just leave the reality you're in and completely start afresh in a new one then what does the first reality matter at all even if you stay there your whole life it's not important that's that's probably i mean that's it's it's a pretty realistic way of of depicting someone with that ability yeah because eventually after after seeing so much death and 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 just so weary of it and just being so intelligent and everyone else is just sort of everyone else just sort of fades sure and any and any relationship that you have is replicated a million times over it's like well the relationship isn't special it's not important because i can just go somewhere else and start it again yeah so exactly why bother why bother getting bogged down with these little people why bother oh op- why bother opening myself to get hurt mm, mm. um I think um, the one thing I've always admired about Rick and Morty is the, the the very little things that it puts in as parts of bigger themes. For example, something Zach mentioned briefly in his in his message to us about um, uh, Beth running into the kitchen and drinking wine. Like it's Beth's sort of low key alcoholism. It's like she's not quite Rick level of constantly drunk, constantly sipping whiskey out of a hip flask, yeah. but she's also using too much wine as a crutch to get through her life day to day yeah it, it doesn't impact on her life but it's still sort of a gentle alcoholism if you will yeah and that's that's rick's fault yeah es- essentially like he left and then like beth up until season three was crippled with the idea that rick might leave again mm, mm. and a lot of her decisions were were based on that fear but by the end of season three, it's like, oh, I don't, yeah, I, I'm not. We're, we're a whole family now, and I'm and I'm not really, you know, sort of interested. Yeah. Anymore, yeah. because I've seen the universe, and and I know that I, I there's a million other dads out there. You know. Mm, mm. Um. I've always I liked as well the um that another thing Zach mentioned about Rick trying to kill himself after he breaks up with Unity, that was left to chance. Essentially, in the end, yeah. I, I remember hearing an interview somewhere with um, 
think it was either Justin Roiland or Dan Harmon or both of them, and they, they both said they wanted Rick's suicide or Rick's suicide attempt to be something left up to chance. They wanted it to be, well, he wanted to kill himself, but external factors prevented him from doing that. And he fell asleep. He fell asleep, or he was drunk, or he was high, or he was whatever, and he just crashed on the desk in front of this great big suicide machine type thing. Yeah. And it, it's interesting how he sort of coddled the little creature that he, uh, you know, sort of set free from its bondage and sort of petted it and sort of cried as he... Yeah, yeah. Which is, it's one of the things of, um, one of the most bizarre parts of moral philosophy for me, both in this show and in real life, is like, um, the idea of, well, there is no right or wrong, there is no good or bad. Y- yeah, okay, but it makes me feel bad do you know what i mean like like yeah, punching I a mean, puppy in the face would make me feel bad I, like i would feel sad as a result of doing that thing and i think that's rick there as 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 out of his mind on drink and drugs as he might be at that point he still has got that base moral like oh well i don't want this creature to suffer yeah i don't think yeah i don't but i don't think it's a principle that we hold okay i th- i think it's i think it's because we have empathy and yes, I, think, I suppose I th- that's true. I think we realise that, well, yeah, okay, the universe doesn't seem to care whether we live or die. You know, it, it, it keeps on spinning whether we, whether we, you know, cure cancer or whatever. It's, it's insignificant to the rest of the universe. And yeah. if it's to be believed, this is only one universe in a series of infinity. So face value we don't have any right or wrong but sure if we abandon them life is just going to get worse for people yeah, so yeah, why yeah. not just sort of try to be decent try to empathize and care about people because if we don't then we're basically just animals killing each other for mm, mm. resources and shit um have you got another crq I do, I do, yes. Um, Hit me. Mis- Mr. Speaker, um... <laughs> My right honourable friend, Rick <laughs> Sanchez. <laughs> Is our current Morty on his way to becoming evil Morty? That's an interesting question. Because, um... Do you, you mean Do you mean the, pro- the actual evil Morty himself, or just another evil Morty? I, I thought that what what was happening was that maybe evil morty catches up with rick and and morty and maybe convinces morty to join him mm. because he is becoming more independent and he's becoming ever more sure of himself and i i, I can totally see that his mindset of nothing matters i think that's probably setting in because me- remember the purge episode yeah, yeah. Where, where, where Morty literally kills hundreds of people. God, he just, yeah. He just, he just loses it and kills scores of people. And Rick's like, oh no, Morty, it's a, it's a, a thing called Persian all. Yeah. The character's totally protected. And then the, <laughs> the, the, the bar that he has is now Persian all uh, free. So that is completely Morty doing that. That was him not under the influence of anything other than his rage and his anger which is pretty fucking scary when you think about it oh yeah yeah i mean he is a 14 year old boy yeah and he's killed all these people like if he's not already there he's certainly very close and i can imagine you know this savvy very intelligent version of himself comes along and says look rick is just gonna hurt you Rick is going to destroy everything that you that you hold dear. So join me, and we can just get rid of him. Mm, but then, do we think that, like, um, like in the episode? Oh, is it the first episode of season two where Rick and more? Where Rick, sorry, started like praying and saying, "Please let my family be okay. Please let me get out of this alive. I I want to do whatever I can." That was almost a redeeming moment for Rick because it was clear that as much as when he came back it was like yeah fuck you god I never believed in you anyway as much as yeah. when he came back he was shouting that he was still trying and to, to, to do anything to protect his family yeah maybe but I think it's probably I think you're right I think that he does care on some level mm. 
but maybe it's because the, the, the perspective that Evil Morty has is so skewed. Like, he doesn't see a complicated man who's so lonely and so heartbroken that he just leaves, you know, Morty, who is a child, essentially. Yeah. Had someone that he looked up to and sort of took his advice from and then he just sort of fucked off you know being well, while being burdened with this knowledge that nothing matters you know I, I, I assume that that can be a lot for a child to take <laughs> I would presume <laughs> so yeah yeah I think, I, think um... that, I, I think that Evil Morty doesn't really care whether he's you know oh Rick's a complicated guy he doesn't he does care, but he just has trouble short. I think it's just, no, you fucking left, you arsehole. I'm going to kill you. I suppose in a lot of ways, this, this knowledge of, um, or this, this concept of nothing really matters, as much as it might be comforting for an adult, it might be the exact opposite for a child. To, yeah. to look at your parents who you view as like an absolute authority and they know everything in the world and think they don't matter. None yeah, of this matters. None of this is important. Yeah, all of their knowledge is is so little compared to everything else. So yeah, why should yeah. I care? Because um, that, that literally turns your world on its head. It certainly does. Because you've got a, a, a definite pre pre-programmed almost set of like a hierarchy of people in your family, in your world of teachers, parents, older siblings, whatever, and then to find out none of it is important. None of it means anything. Yeah, We're all just floating through space trying to figure out what to do none of us have the answers and that can that can be a lot for a child to take mm -hmm. um, um but that might th uh, we're we're basing this on the assumption that that's evil morty's motives we don't we don't really know what he wants he might just want ice cream or something it might be yeah, some kind of ridiculously is, absurd thing that exactly it's just guessing work at this point but um i'm very excited to see what they do mm. with it Okay, I have a CRQ. Should 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 me seeks be allowed to exist? Should, uh, is it not just cruel to let them exist at all? That's a good point. Because um, if if they were a naturally occurring being, then sh sure, let them exist. Whatever, that's kind of great, right? But it, you get the impression that either it's something that Rick has invented or something that somebody has invented that you you press a button and one is just generated into existence. Um, if it's like a virtual assistant like a Google assistant or like an Alexa or if it's just an actual physical being or if it's like a animatronic thing that just teleports out of this box with some so rudimentary that, intelligence so you think that there should be like a sort of uh, me seeks rights inquiry into the, into the boxes <laughs> <laughs> my point is like if you say to a me seeks here open this like jar of pickles They'll, they'll open the jar of pickles, right? And but if you... Disappear. Yeah. And that's not a cruel thing to do, because that they're, they're, that's what they want to do. They're happy about that. But if yeah. you give them an impossible task, they will never die. They are immortal. And to sentence somebody to, like, an eternity of their friends dying and stuff, do you know what I mean? That's, like... Yeah. Is that not cruelty? But don't they then, like, just... Like, as we've seen, they, they, they can't help Jerry. So they just try and kill him. That's true. So maybe if you kill the person who gives you the command, then it just cancels you out. Maybe. I'm I'm assuming that that's what they were trying to do. Because mm -hmm. that makes sense, but we don't know that they weren't just driven mad by the yeah. the existence is pain for a me seeks type thing. That's true. I don't think that. Uh, I think it's a sort of sort of comment on how selfish we are. Like, we, we didn't... None of them thought through the implications of here we have this box full of creatures that, that, that serve you and if they can't fulfil their task then they're condemned to torture through living. Yeah, yeah. Every Everyone was just focused on themselves which I think is a sort of comment on how selfish human beings can be. Mm, mm, in spite definitely. Of the, in spite of the greater picture, you know? Mm. Um... But, yeah, it's a good question. So my point was, uh, I mean, we, it's taken me a while to get around to it, but should we limit the the, the requests that are able to be made to me-seeks? 
you you can only do something that you're too lazy to do. <laughs> but like even then, no, oh, it's a pickle. Yeah, I don't think that. I, I'm I'm of the I'm of the opinion that that people. I'm sure that plenty of people would say, "Oh no, it's cruel. You can't do that." But I think that if they if no one was watching them, they'd probably ask all the requests that they wanted. I suppose so. I suppose so. I know that I certainly would. If I had a box full of servants, <laughs> I would ask them to do things. Like I know that it's 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 a selfish, horrible thing to inflict on a on a creature, but it's like. Yeah, I, I need, I need, uh, I need an acting job. Get me an act. <laughs> get me an acting job, please. And then they get me next week. Lot, get me next week's lottery numbers, please. Yeah, and then they go mad. I can't get you an acting job. <laughs> You're too shit. You can't act. <laughs> I think if I could get a meeting out of the box and ask them questions like, "Is this really what you want from life?" Or do you want to be a fulfilled person some other way? Because yep. you know, in, 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 in a lot of ways, what it is, is like, this me seeks, existence is pain, we are not born into this world fumbling for meaning. It's like a, it's a, a microcosm of the human condition. In yep. that, like, you and I are born into this world fumbling for meaning. We don't know what the meaning of life is. And by the time we're old enough, we might know then. But we, I know, I don't know now, and I don't think no, anybody I, else I, in the world really does. Yeah, I think that it's just sort of what life is, what you make it. Mm, I think, mm. and that's so cliche and so fucking birthday cardish. But <laughs> it, I think it is true. I think it just depends on who you are and what you want, and it's very, sub, it's very subjective. The meaning of life. Mm. But my point is, if you take, if you say to a Meeseeks, you don't have to obey my commands. If, if if you introduce this world in which they can generate their own meaning for existence, do they want that? Because in the I show... Don't think, I don't think so. Yeah, but then the question is, are they conditioned to not want that? Or do they just not want it? They genuinely think, I just want to carry out a simple request, I want to die. Or, or do they... Are they just an, an intelligent creature that has been conditioned to believe they want death? Well, what 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 is it that generates them? I mean the box, right? Yeah, yeah, but like, what are they? Are they inside the box? Are they sort of formed from the air? And some are they in some sort of a, a primordial sort of space where they're sort of summoned? I mean, they might. It might just be the case of. Uh, it's a very short span of 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 human life that they're sort of brought in. I I I, ha, I think that it is part of their biology. I think that they are sort of born with an innate sense to do one thing and then die. Mm. And we 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 view their entire life cycle, birth to death. Yeah, and I don't. Th- I think if you said, "What do you want to do?" I don't think it would. I think it would say something like, "Oh, I'm here to help you." You know that. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't think you could really convince it to sort of live its own life because it is they do admit oh it's very painful to to be alive Mm. they they, they do the task so quickly and as quickly as possible so that they can stop existing (laughs) yeah yeah you know um but the only way we would know is if we if if dan Harmon and justin roiland made an episode where they explored that concept Mm. um do you have any more crqs um, I do. Uh, will Jerry ever become competent? <laughs> well, he sort of became competent in that uh, in the Cronenberg episode, didn't he? Th- yeah, through that, sort of extreme duress. Yeah, but but that was like, that's a a reality that um, no longer is relevant to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you think the Jerry that we have just now with with Beth, and and the sort of situation that they're in, where it's um, oh we're a family now and things are, do you think that he'll sort of get off his laurels and start being a normal, unpathetic human being? I'm not sure because he has the potential, right? Like the, that episode with the Plutonians where he starts like. 
he cares about Morty and he cares about being loved and respected by his son and he has the motivation to become a better person and to, to do something more worthwhile than, than freelance advertising work or whatever it might be. Yeah. I think it I think it would I think it would be interesting if, if it came to the point where we liked Jerry more than we liked Rick. <laughs> I think that would be a pretty interesting uh way to take the show. That Rick had all the power at the beginning and because his his world view is so it's so impractical for so many people it might be the case that we end up liking someone who accepts the sort of mundanity of life and and doesn't want to go outside the box mm. you know so who who who, st- who struggles to find meaning and continues regardless of, of, of the evidence put forth. It's like maybe that's more important. Sure, sure. So do you like Rick? Um That's a that's a difficult question. I I I think that I, I, I can't speak for everyone else, but I think a lot of people admire him because he has the freedom that we don't. Okay. But I, but I do. If he was a real person, I don't think I'd like him. No, I don't think many people would like him. I think I do admire his sort of his freedom and his ability to, to just act. But yeah. he is not a good person. I I don't no. think I would like him. I wouldn't get no. on with him. But like, it's I an interesting view into the the mind of somebody who has that freedom, who has that, that ability to go anywhere in the universe. I think we like him because we're not near him. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, this, oh, this guy is so cool. It's like, if you met someone like that in real life who regarded you as dust, you would you would just say, wow, what a fucking dick. Mm, mm, that's he, true. He's, he's so apathetic to everyone. What a horrible person. Mm. Whereas when you're sort of out outside of of the world that these people live in where you're just observing you sort of root for the the character that's probably the character that can do things that you can't sure like cuz Jerry I think Jerry represents the sort of the boring uh mundane aspects of life and and I think that because people watch television and film to sort of escape that it's they're being reminded by how boring and and horrible and dreary life can be, and how I'm sure that at some point in our lives we've all felt like Jerry and we've all felt very pathetic and sort of meek, and here we have this person who is who does not care about any of the the niceties or the conventions and will do whatever he wants. I think that that because we can't do that ourselves, there's a sort of twisted admiration for that person but yeah, in, yeah. as I said in real life it would be oh he's an arsehole I don't like him yeah totally so in the show I like him he's my favourite character in the show mm. but in real life I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't sit down and have a drink with him yeah yeah so I have a CRQ go on then does Rick love the whole family even Jerry because he, he clearly sort of loves the others. Like, he has a love for Morty and he has a love for Beth. I'd even go so far as to say he loves Summer. But I, I don't know what he feels about um, Jerry. Because he, he makes... Rick makes it clear that he doesn't necessarily like the concept of traditions and a traditional family and all this sort of stuff. And, and, and being related yeah. to someone doesn't mean anything in the same way that nothing means anything and all this. But then he, yeah. he seems to have this predisposition of liking people who are related to him in some way, who are his blood relatives of, of Beth, yeah. Summer and Morty and then he doesn't like he, <laughs> doesn't like Jerry I mean I think it's because Summer uh, Beth and Morty are, are in some way are, are like Rick sure and they they understand to some degree at least that that nothing does matter. Yeah. 
Whereas Jerry is constantly trying to sort of live a normal life, and I I suppose that he de- that Rick detests that. Mm, I suppose. Uh, and and Jerry wants Jerry is wants simple things. He wants to be loved. And he wants and to win he, at that bubble game that he plays at the, at the breakfast yeah, table where he's exa- yeah ex- exactly. And Rick can't have that. Rick can't have a normal mundane life, and he can't emotionally connect with people in the same way that Jerry can. So maybe he hates the fact that Jerry can do that. And and yet it's just so mundane and so boring. It's like how how you, you you can do something that I can't, and yet you're so insignificant. Mm-hmm. Maybe that just completely, you know, just pisses him off. Mm. I think it would be interesting to see. Like, uh, it'd be interesting to see Rick's relationship with Jerry grow. To some extent, they'd do an adventure together, or, or I mean, an adventure that isn't the hologram episode. <laughs> like, do you know yeah. what I mean? How they got out of that, and Rick still hated Jerry. Jerry still hated Rick. It'd be interesting to see their relationship change and grow. And yeah, when 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 it was when they went to that place where the the immortality field. Um, uh, you know the one where Jerry sort of tries to betray Rick and then realizes. Oh yes, no, yeah, the theme park. Do. And Rick drops some amazing truth bombs <laughs> about Jerry. I want to try. I need to find that monologue because that is one fucking amazing monologue. It's so harsh and so true. That uh, it always blew my mind. That concept of an immortality field of like, would you go to an immort- immortality field? Say like a theme park in the UK opened up, and they're like, "Yep, yeah, we've got this immortality field technology," and through whatever, they were able to prove to us that it did actually work. Would you go? Would you go and kill people? It's like, Or would you just go so that you didn't have to hold back at any point? You're like, well, I, I want to do paintball, but with real guns. Or Do you know what I mean? It's it's crazy to me. Um, I don't know if I would, because I would be constantly afraid that it would stop working. Yeah, that's the great the great terror, isn't it? Yeah, and then and then oh shit, I'm dead, you know. Yeah. Oh no, I've killed twenty people. Shit. So he's at, he's in the snake, and he's getting eaten. Oh yes, of course. And he's like, "You self righteous piece of shit! You took my family. I took your family. Who had more taken from them when you shot twenty cc's of liquid dream killer into my daughter? She was Rick's daughter, Jerry. She had options." That all ended because you felt sorry for you. You act like prey, but you're a predator. You use pity to lure in your victims. That's how you survive. I survive because I know everything. That snake survives because children wander off. And you survive because people think, Oh, this poor piece of shit, he never gets a break. I can't stand the deafening, silent wails of his wilting soul. I guess I'll hire him or marry him. (laughs) That is is a bit intense. Yeah, and it's true, though. It is. It's a fascinating look into... Jerry and Rick. Yeah. And yet he saves him anyway. Mm, mm. Maybe it's Which... just because he didn't want uh, Beth to hate him. Because Beth sort of is in love with Jerry in a funny way. Yeah, but he could get another Jerry. That's true. He could. He could. He could have just He could have just went to another dimension and got another one. So maybe in some level. Because I don't think... I don't think it's something you can really help as human beings. I think that if you're... Rick even recognizes that it's like if you spend so much time with someone, that like proximity often uh, develops into love, you know, um, or hate depending on if 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 you're so different, then you you you'll probably go grow to hate that person. But if you're with them constantly, and you live with them, I'm sure that some form of attachment will uh, uh, form, whether you like it or not. Mm. So maybe on some level he does sort of care for Jerry in a very <laughs> meek and abstract way. <laughs> he might do. It's, it's it's unclear. It's um That's and it's so good that it's unclear and I'm glad that the questions are still sort of up for grabs cuz I don't think it would be as interesting. Mm, mm. I can't get it. She was Rick's daughter, man. She had options. I can't get over that. That's a really good line. <laughs> I love it how he refers to himself as the third in in the third person. Yeah. 
He's so narcissistic, and he has like, you know, oh, that's ridiculous and stuff like that. It makes me laugh. <laughs> he only talks like that when he's on the Citadel. That's ridiculous, yeah. and, and things like the scientist formerly known as Rick, and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. There's all these bizarre, self-aware jokes that uh, they yeah. really tickle me. Fuck me, pal. Fuck you. No, 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 no. Fuck me. <laughs> um, I have another question. Yep. Why does Rick keep going? Keep going, doing adventures. Keep living. Keep going anywhere. Just keeps existing. Well, I had a similar question in that, does Rick want to die? Yeah. I think it might be a, a couple of things, in that it could be, he knows that his death doesn't really mean anything, in, in that he's, in a lot of ways, he is the most important person in any given dimension that he's in. Yeah. But on the same level, like, there is, there is an infinite number of him. His existence doesn't matter, because if he died, somebody would come and take his place anyway. Yeah. Maybe he keeps living... It's like um, a simple pleasures type thing, of like, oh, well, I've got my whiskey, and I've got more tea, and I, I can and I can do some adventuring. Maybe a simple pleasures, problem-solving type. Oh, hey, I just want to do something today. Let's go and overthrow a government, or, or whatever it might be. But is, is Rick not smart enough to realise that wait, if every single version of myself realised that if we all killed ourselves, then there would be none left. But what would, what would the end game for that be? Why would they all kill themselves? Because because they, they clearly they clearly have so such a hard time existing. And, and really all they do is destroy things. Mm-hmm. They're not capable of, of sort of... Well, not yet, anyway. They're not capable of sort of building... Uh, relationships. Um, I mean, well, well, it's infinite number of universes, so one of them has to be. Mm, mm-hmm. One of them has to be very fulfilled and very happy, and that would be a great episode, I think. Yeah, and uh, an insight into like healthy Rick. Yeah, that Rick comes to terms or or meets a person that is him, but loves his family and feels fulfilled. Would that Rick go into, like, charitable endeavours? Like, would that Rick have cured, like, AIDS on his planet? Yeah, maybe. If he loved his family and he decided he never wanted wanted to leave, and he stayed with his wife and had his daughter and all this sort of stuff, would he have stayed on Earth and cured AIDS? And I think and... I think it would be an interesting episode, because I think that if, if, if Rick saw that, I just get the feeling that Rick would want to sabotage it. Mm, perhaps. It, it, no, and... Nobody else can be happy if I'm not happy. Yeah, maybe by the end of the episode, he sort of destroys the universe that he, that his happier self lives in. God, how dark is that? That is pretty dark, and that would I think that's you know. I think that fits well with Rick's, and then he'd probably feel bad about it, to some degree. Mm, mm-hmm. mm, that's true. And maybe it would give him the kick up the backside he needed to start loving and respecting his own family more. St- yeah. Start acknowledging the fact that he loves his family and that he wants to spend time with them and that sort of stuff. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? I think, um, as as a, as a second different CRQ, the Go Unity on. episode has like a lot to talk about, and I think. Um, oh yeah, definitely. She briefly mentions Unit. I say she. They. They mention that like, they are trying to join the Galactic Federation as this. Um, hive mind type civilization should yeah. like a hive mind have access to a galactic federation like that because doesn't that defeat the purpose of a galactic federation yeah because they are essentially just one person right yeah i mean it's it's argued that her light i'm sorry their life is is um just as meaningless as Rick's, mm, mm. because they say that uh, oh, I'm gonna, I'm going to absorb the. It's it's confusing how they can use, you know, personal pronouns and then it's like oh they said and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I w- wouldn't it be we will one day rule the universe, or are they an individual that can just you know, take over other people. I think that's the thing with a hive mind, is I I presume it's just one individual mind spread across 
a million billion people or whatever. Because it's hard to it's hard to like. Is it a sort of? I got the feeling that that it was a female hive mind that can take over lots of different people. Perhaps, or perhaps that's just because it, it spoke to Rick through that that one female alien. Like it could just considering yeah, it's a hive doesn't... mind that doesn't have like an intrinsic body. It's kind yeah. of genderless, really, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose. But it's definitely an individual. Yeah, I'd say so. An individual spread across however many. But it's sort of different to other hive minds from pop culture. Like, say, the Borg. It's very different to the Borg because they are... Yeah, the Borg are, the Borg are a set of uh, principles, really. Yeah, yeah. We, wa- we, wa- we want perfection, and that's it. They're a computer unity... algorithm made flesh, almost. Yeah, you can't re- you can't reason with them. You can't sort of resistance you know, is futile. That, yeah. Yeah, you can't appeal to their softer side or their you know cuddly side. Whereas y- you probably could with Unity mm. if you were Rick. Anyway. Unity seems to have emotions. Seems to have a, a, a desire to get this and a, a drive to do whatever. Yeah. Which is interesting because you'd think as a hive mind, is the pointless nature of of everything not a bit more clear to you? Uh, of saying, yeah, yeah. well, I, I control seven billion people, and like she says, um, this girl used to be a drug addict, and now she's a marine biologist. It, does that not, when you are yourself, and yeah, you you both are her, and you've hired her, and you have the ability to fire? What's the point in, what's the point in yeah, making her a marine biologist? What's the point in making you, her anything? You've made it. You've made her life better. Fair enough, but you are her. Yeah, it, she, you've 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 only you've only just destroyed who she was and then just made something that you think is better. Mm. Because it's not the original girl, the girl who was a drug addict. She isn't experiencing the life as a marine biologist. No, she's dead, essentially. Yeah, essentially. It's just a host mm. to this mm. to this mind, um, which sort of... And then she's like, oh, uh, sorry, it says um, one day I will... Uh, absorb the universe and then I will become a god so what is the point <laughs> of that yeah you yeah. want to be the only thing in existence that controls everything else what is the po- you, you would be bored out your tits eventually because you would you would make everything so perfect and so idyllic that it would just be pointless yeah yeah you're completely right and I and I don't. Who wants life to be perfect? Challenging and 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 difficulty and messiness. That's important to have. Mm, mm. As horrible as it as it often can be, it's it's. If life was just sailing and just smooth sailing and everything was fine, then it would be pointless. Yeah, you're right. We may as well just stop. Challenge and and the Death Watch Beetle is what's what drives like a lot of individual lives. Thinking, well, if my life is perfect, then I'm not content. I sort of need to be struggling and going uphill to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, bettering myself exactly. and whatever. Exactly, and um, that's why I think you know I think that she's Jesus. I think it's got a very human mind. Yeah. Yeah. Because humans, if they had the capacity to do that, we would probably do the same thing. Mm. Um, and we'd probably, you know, absorb the universe and then get very bored and just sort of just start doing shit. Mm. <laughs> just mm. start blowing up planets and stuff like that. Um, but I think that that's why Unity is such a good uh, par- parallel to Rick. Because they both, in the end, are living pointless existences. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, w- that will amount to nothing. Mm. But but um, Unity has generated this sense of, of a goal for herself. And when Rick yeah. comes and rips off the band-aid, as it were, and says, like, well, th- the goal is pointless. What's the point yeah. in joining the Federation? That That's not a goal. That's, that's, a, that's a fake goal, as it were. I think that I think that unity is a great a great way of showing how a sub like a sort of a direct set of a um I'm trying to think of an example. Like I know that this is a bit off topic, but look, racism. Mm-hmm. Like if racists 
that white supremacists got what they wanted and and got a place just for white people in the end it would end up eating itself i'm sure because because they would end up like start pickpocket or pickpocketing they would start being pernickety over tiny little dna deviations in white people it's oh well you're like 0.8 percent uh amazonian so we have to get rid of you and eventually it would be one person left you know they'd be so focused on purity that everyone who who believed in that would be probably purged essentially Mm. and that's why it's such a ridiculous ideology if you know what I mean and I think that to sort of strive to be perfect you're never you're never going to get that so in the end it will just be you by yourself I agree and I think um, I hate to say this but I have I have run out of CRQs now have you got any more? Um. oh yes I do ah. Um. does Rick's family no longer need him? that's an interesting question I, I, I suppose the, the 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 answer to the question is another question of did they ever need him? Well, they well they, they thought that they did. Mm, mm. Look, Morty really enjoyed the adventures with Rick. Sure. Beth Beth was afraid that Rick would leave. Um, Jerry didn't really need him. Jerry wanted him gone. Uh, and Summer. You know, constantly wants to sort of oh I want to be I I want to be the the new sidekick mm, mm. almost. But I think that they're they're coming to a point where they they can see through Rick's bullshit, mm. and I think that there will be a point where they go. Well, I mean, Beth even admitted it. It's like there's a million of you. Why don't you just go instead of, you know, coming here to kill a clone version of me? Just leave and just let us be happy. Sure. And and interestingly, Rick opts to stay. It's like, oh, nothing matters, and yet he stays regardless, mm. which suggests that he maybe does want to sort of put in some roots and connect with his family. Mm. I suppose that's the thing that bookends it, is nothing matters, but I want to be here. Yeah. And that's that's the nature of, of the chaos of life, I suppose, of, of nothing matters. So you or I could up sticks, move to Paris, and start a elephant selling business or whatever nothing really matters but I choose to be here where I am I choose to be doing what I am yeah so maybe the things that well the things that we like matter to us yeah yeah like I I like my room I like everything in it and it's it's very accustomed to to what I want to do sure and I, while I can recognize that probably in the in the, the long term nothing does matter but I don't want to fucking move to Paris and and, and and fucking breed elephants. Yeah, yeah. Just because nothing matters doesn't mean that I, I that I just do things for no apparent reason. Mm. But then that's the interesting thing of um, things like people say um, the most important things in your life are like your career or, or whatever it might be. That's the thing that doesn't matter. But then your your slight personal preferences of well, I prefer vanilla to strawberry, like ice cream. That's yeah. what matters to you more than, like, a career exactly. in the long run. Careers come and go. I'm, uh, I'm all out of uh, uh, CRQs. As am I. Is it time for closing statements? I, I believe it is. Excellent. Here we go. I think this type of absurdism is something that should be seen more in popular media. I think this philosophy is... Not only is it an interesting one, I think it would help... Like, just calm everybody down a bit. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Which sounds very belittling, but... No, it's, I, I completely agree with you. I think that if people didn't take themselves so seriously... Yeah. And maybe and maybe realise that, yes, yes, I mean, your, your pernicious need to, to get what you want is good. I mean, go you. But you do realise that centuries to come, it will mean nothing. Yeah. It will fall into dust. It's like, it's like that great poem um, uh, by uh, what's his first name? Second name Shelley. Oh, what's Percy. His first name? Percy Shelley, Ozymandias. Mm. That is a great poem, and it, and it, you know this 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 emperor who was the king of mm. kings who had 
a, a land that stretched throughout the world and now it's it's dust and all that's left is a broken statue it's like no matter how hard you work take take you know find solace in the fact that it is all going to be over mm. and these these short term goals they don't really matter as much be it short term political goals be it any of these things yep. they aren't important yeah they matter to you which is fine mm. but don't don't let it be the hill that you die on yeah yeah you know don't don't kill yourself trying to strive for something that eventually will mean nothing. Mm. Do what you want to do. Just don't, you know, overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. What's your what's your closing statement? Um. It. Uh, I, ha- I haven't wrote one, so I'm just sort of thinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it. I think it's a very, like, despite how dark it is, I think it's quite a, a sort of warm show, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Like, it, it's... It's try. I think... I, I, I'm in total agreement with what you've said. It's just... I think that it's trying to strike a balance between trying to find meaning in existence... And recognizing that yes, it's good to have goals, but you know it is going to amount to nothing eventually. So just try and be nice, and try and have fun, mm, try mm. and live your life. Be kind, know. be honest, be truthful. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, it's that optimistic nihilism of nothing matters. We're all going to die. So why don't yeah. we just be nice to each other? Why don't we be kind? Why don't we try to allow for the betterment of 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 society? Yeah. And it's very. I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of, oh, nothing matters, so fuck everyone else. Mm. You know, which is which. If 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 moral nihilism is correct, both, uh, both perspectives, have to be valid in that world. Because you can't, you can't, you know, if 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 good and evil are are bollocks. Yeah. Then you can't then say, oh well, you have to be kind. It's like well you should try to be kind mm, mm. but you, you you can't impose a moral framework on something that you've just debunked yeah you know yeah I mean? sure well after an hour and a half I think we might have exhausted our notes <laughs> yes I, I, I certainly have um, yeah Jesus I do love Rick and Morty. I think I really, I really do. It's, I think it's fantastic. It's definitely one of my favourites. It's one of my favourite TV shows. It's it's something I have never seen before, film or TV or any media or anything. It's this brilliant idea of nothing matters. <laughs> it, it's yeah. the absurdism that it just so happily adopts. I do. I wish that. I wish that. Like, in in the new season of a of Doctor Who, I wish I wish that they that the Doctor has this sort of existential crisis <laughs> goes full where, Rick Sanchez yeah I think that that would I, I think they they sort of maybe almost did that with Peter Capaldi mm, mm. Like this, in season 8 he was very sort of harsh and very sort of cutting yeah yeah I think that would be very interesting to have a doctor like that it would you're right but um we'll see mm. okay so I think what we're doing from now on is we are going to be releasing two episodes a week, which is absolutely insane in a lot of ways. I know. Ooh. I know. I, I don't know how I'm going to be able to cope. Um, <laughs> we're going to be releasing a main episode on Sundays, and we're going to be releasing a mini episode on Fridays. Main episodes are going to be films, TV, media, all the usual good stuff. And mini episodes yep. are going to be season four of Rick and Morty, which is airing at the minute. We are a bit behind, but since we're in the UK, it is an absolute nightmare to get it. So uh, yep. please do bear it's with not us. Even out until, it's not even out until January, I don't think. Oh, Lord. So we'll... we'll... So we'll try and... We'll get it in a secret way that we're not going to tell anybody about for fear of being horrifically sued. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, The first episode uh, of of Rick and Morty Season 4 is called Edge of Tomorty, Rick Die, Rick (laughs) Pete. I mean, I loved Edge (laughs) of Tomorrow, so so this is going to be something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And what is the film Um, that we're doing on Sunday? The film's... Lewis. That will be released on next Sunday. Um, will be Terminator One, 
and Terminator 2. Because, Excellent. in my mind, you cannot have a Terminator 2. Because Terminator 2 is the best one, right? That You can't have that without the first one. Yeah. It's sort of, sort of the, the, uh, the starter before the main. Yeah, it's an appetizer before the delightful, stunningly delicious main course. Yes, exactly. exactly. Okay, so where can people yeah. find you online, Danny? Uh, they can find me on Instagram at Ohiram. You can find me on uh, Twitter at Kerzo2000. And they can also find me on Facebook. Uh, my page is called Daniel Care. And I'm sitting in a chair <laughs> looking solemn at the camera. Yeah, Very good. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm on Instagram at Lewis underscore Brindley. I'm on uh, Twitter at Lewis Brindley 4. Uh, you can find me at those places there. You can qu- get in contact with either of us on social media. You can get in contact with the show, if you'd like to, um, at shoutingintothevoidcontact at gmail.com. Um, if you like what we do here, if you like all the content we're producing, we do make more content. You can get access to that on Patreon. Um, go and check it out if you want. There'll be a link in the show notes and on our website, which is, of course, shoutingintothevoid.podomatic.com. Yep, and uh, a special a special thank you again to... Uh, Zachary Sutcliffe for lending us his unique mindset mm. onto uh, Rick and Morty. Indeed, uh, thank, thank you, Zach. You. You're a good egg. Yep. Thank you, thank you for helping us celebrate our, our tenth, tenth episode. episode. Isn't that crazy? Tenth episode. I know. How the fuck did we get here? I know. Jesus. <laughs> thank you very much for listening. Yeah. Thank you.